it's life changing. My son had his about seven weeks ago, his transplant. His depression's kicked in. How long will that take for? Like, don't know how to talk to him whatsoever. I don't know what to do. Okay. Um, <coughs> Have the diagnose, have the um, have the doctors and the clinical staff really picked up on that depression as well? No, because he won't open up and talk to anybody with it either. And if I start talking, be quiet, mum. Be quiet, mum. So we're kind of stuck. Okay. It probably really is trying to get the clinical team to acknowledge that he's got depression, that you truly believe yeah. this is not your son, this is not how your son normally behaves, yeah. um, because it needs to be recognised there so that we can then try and manage and work out what's causing that depression. Yep. Yeah. And it's probably trying to tell your son that it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, it, they sort of say, um, the statistics are there probably saying about 50% of people that are diagnosed with cancer or hematological malign malignancy will actually go through a period of depression. Yes. Um, now some of that can be handled naturally or just by therapies, just doing something to distract a person, mm. some of those people actually need to have drugs to get them out of that depression. Certainly the earlier it gets treated, the better. Yeah. I've seen people who go on to tablets and then we start to say, oh, we might back off on these tablets and we've sort of had people over my dead body, are you stopping that tablet? Because mm. they actually realise yeah. how depressed they were and how different the, the tablets are actually making them feel. Sort of thing. So it's probably what I try to say, I, I sort of ask a person, I said, is it sunny today or cloudy? And usually the person says it's cloudy. And I said, what do you think is causing that cloud? And then that sort of gets them to start talking yeah. about what actually might be getting them down um, and what they think that black cloud is that's, that's up there in the sky. I ask them what's wrong, they say, I don't know. I don't get answers. Obviously. Has he still got contact with his friends? Not many. Yeah, and that's probably, it's trying to reconnect with his friends and get him out there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If your stem cell collection in first lots doesn't go ahead, can you try again in three or four months? Yes, you can. So some people... Is it within the 12 month period or...? Oh, look, no. ideally it's within 12 months, but it can be done after 12 months as well. So there can be lots of different why, reasons why a stem cell collection might fail. Um, if it was to do with infection or just the timing of when they went looking for the stem cells, um, because we do have set times when we, we look for stem cells, but sometimes some people might peak early, so we've actually missed that, op that window of opportunity to collect the stem cells. So if things like that occur, yes, we can go, go and try again. Um, but usually we do give a period of one or two months before we try and go through that stem cell collection process again. There is also some people, there's about five or ten percent of the population through the standard way that we collect stem cells will not collect stem cells. So we do actually have another drug available now which works a little differently in trying to release those stem cells from the bone marrow to allow us to collect the stem cells. So there are other options up the sleeve if someone doesn't collect stem cells first time round. Did you say that age has nothing to do, you know, the age, uh, how easy you get through it or how difficult it is to get through the stem cell transplant? Yes, it's not... It's not an age related? No, um, because uh, like I said, I have seen um, very elderly people where I've been very nervous mm. about giving chemotherapy to. Um, and thinking the doctor's very brave here and yeah. they've actually taken the transplant process unbelievably well mm -hmm. and probably better um, than someone who's in their you know, 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. okay. So it, it's not a precluding factor. Mm. And it's always, it is successful every single time? Or? Uh, no, um, transplants can be unsuccessful. Yeah. So the disease, no matter everything that we've done, um, to treat this disease, we can actually find that the disease can come back within the first 100 days or not long after. Yeah. Um, it's usually after three months is when the, the doctors will go and reassess the disease um, and do all the scans and tests again. And very occasionally we will have people that will have their disease come back mm. in that time frame. Can they do it again then? 
or will they, they do it again? Uh, they look at what's occurring and what's happening. Mm. Um, as I mentioned, if it's myeloma, we do know that sometimes one transplant will not get that disease totally into remission, mm -hmm. so a second transplant is considered. In lymphoma, it's usually a different issue, and we have to start looking at uh, a donor transplant as opposed to an autologous transplant mm -hmm. in that setting. Mm -hmm. Does everyone need to have a transplant? Uh, no. So some people, um, particularly with lymphoma, not all types of lymphoma will need to even have transplant as a consideration sort of thing. So it's usually, what are the features? Um, the one good thing about technology is that we're actually starting to understand that we've really got to go and look inside the cell of the lymphoma to understand how it's behaving. And that's actually giving doctors information that identifies whether a person needs a transplant or what treatment they actually need um, and whether they're going to do well or they're going to be someone that I have to watch like a hawk because this disease could come back at any time. So we're starting to get better understanding of the actual diseases which actually helps us guide treatment. But there are some lymphomas where we don't even need to consider transplant as part of the treatment. Couldn't get beam chemotherapy, like any of the high dose chemotherapy, you do need to have stem cells to rescue your bone marrow. At the beginning you said stem cells can be uh, uh, preserved for a long period of time. Is that a commercial reality? Because I'm pretty sure I saw in the form that said that you only hold the cells for five years, four or five years. Yep. So some facilities are sort of changing <coughs> what they're saying, but basically stem cells can be in stored indefinitely sort of thing. So you're, it would be up to your doctor to sort of tell the, the transplant lab, keep storing this person's stem cells. So I don't think, although they have those clauses, they cannot throw away stem cells without getting permission of the patient. No, it's a storage issue. So basically we, we know we just can't keep getting more tanks and more tanks and more tanks because no one's got that amount of space to store all of these stem cells. Lymphoma, um, if they're collected sort of halfway through their treatment and they haven't had a full course of treatment, they usually do test the cells to find out if the lymphoma's there. And if it is present, then they might hold on to the stem cells for a while and wait and try and get another collection where there's no lymphoma <coughs> present. And then depending on that, they'll throw the, the cells away that are contaminated, or they may just not freeze the stem, the stem cells that are collected because they know it's contaminated, and they just say it's not worth storing these stem cells. So they would test it after that? Yes, so. yeah, so once they've collected them, they usually with lymphoma, they do do a testing to make sure that there aren't lymphoma cells there present. Thank you.